Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play in television games on your Xbox Series S and your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention before we get too far in today's video, for this video, what we're going to need to do is already have both dev mode and retroarch already set up and installed on our Xbox Series S and our Xbox Series X. That's not something I'm going to be showing you in today's video, although I will be leaving a card on screen and the link in the description down below to my previous video where I show you step by step how to do that. You're going to have to watch that first, then you can come back here and I'm going to be showing you specifically how to play in television games on your Xbox. We're all going to be doing this over the entire map network drive where we're going to transfer the BIOS files and the game files to the internal storage on our Xbox. So depending on where you actually started with videos of mine on the old RetroArch setup video or the newest one, you may already have a map network drive set up. However, I will be showing you that in the next step in today's video. If you already have this done, feel free to skip that and you can continue on later on to actually looking at the BIOS files and the game files later. So the first thing again we need to do is open up our Xbox device portal. This of course can be found on the dashboard of our dev mode. You can find this access portal and we're going to need to open this up in any browser that you want. From this point, what we're going to be doing is coming to our left bar right here. We're going to be clicking on file explorer and this is going to open up the file explorer section. Once we're here, we're going to be coming to the top right and we're going to be clicking on this browse option right here. This is going to open up a pop-up that's going to allow us to access remotely some files on our Xbox and access the internal storage on our Xbox. So to do this, what we need to do is copy this URL here at the very top. We can highlight it, we can right click and we can click copy. And we're going to be opening up a file explorer on our windows. We're going to be clicking on the URL path right here. We're going to be pasting in the URL that we just got. And we're going to be clicking enter to enter here. Now, if this is your first time doing this, it may ask you for a username and password. All of this information is also stored here. So you can simply copy all of this for your username and password. Now this can get a little bit annoying as every time you want to get back here, you will need to manually enter this URL. You'll need to manually enter the password and you'll need to manually enter the username. So instead what we're going to be doing is two things. The first thing we're going to be doing is opening up our command prompt and we're going to be automatically saving this password and username. So we no longer have to enter it manually again. To do this again, we're going to be opening up our web browser and we're going to be copying the CMD key here at the bottom. We're simply going to highlight it. We're going to right click and we're going to be clicking copy. From this point, we're going to be opening up CMD in Windows. To do this, we're going to be coming down to the bottom left. We're going to be clicking on our search bar and we're going to be searching for CMD. And we're going to be looking for the command prompt right here. We're going to left click to open this up and our command prompt should open. Once this is open, all we need to do is right click here. It will automatically paste everything we have. We simply click enter and then we should get this result here. Credential added successfully. And that basically attaches this username and password to our windows. So it'll automatically remember it every time. From this point, we have made it a lot easier. However, now from this point, you still need to know this URL every time you want to actually access the remote files. So what we're going to be doing is one extra step. This is optional, but we're going to be setting up a mapped network drive. So it'll actually be saved in our windows so we can easily get back here whenever we want. What we're going to be doing again is again copying this file path. We're going to be opening up another file browser in Windows and we're going to be clicking on this PC right here. And then here at the very top, we should have this option map network drive. We can left click to open this. And here we're going to be able to enter a new drive that will automatically store this location. And since we've already saved the username and password in Windows, it means we'll really easily be able to access back here whenever we want. So the first thing you need to do is assign a drive letter. So you can choose whatever you want here. So I've already done this to my Z drive, but you can attach it to another drive, for example, Y or any other available letter here in your windows. We can then enter our folder location. So here you can just control V again to paste in the folder location that you've set up previously. You can then enable automatic reconnect and sign in. I'm going to be disabling this, but you can feel free to enable this and you can connect using different credentials, although we're not going to be doing that in today's video. Once you're happy with everything here, you can click finish and then you will have a new map network drive that will show up here like this. It'll mention development files. It will then show the URL to your Xbox and now clicking this will open this up very easily. So we no longer have to locate back here manually. From this point, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be opening up the Windows apps folder and here we should see all the currently installed apps on our Xbox. So at the top here, we have my files explorer underneath this. And I have two folders named platinum Fox and they have RetroArch mentioned in the title. This is my RetroArch folder. Although depending on the version you're using, it may be named slightly different, but there will be two folders here. Previously, this folder started with one E four C, although this can depend widely depending on the version you're using and depending on if it's a nightly or not. So I really don't know what to expect here, but you're going to be looking for some folder named RetroArch or something like one E four C. Once you've located this folder, we're going to be looking for the second one on the list. It'll typically be a much larger folder. As you can see, this is around 1.4 gigabytes and the other one is around 3.5 kilobytes. 
We're going to be opening up this second folder. And here we should see all of our default installed RetroArch content. What we're going to be doing from this point is creating a new folder here that's going to store our BIOS files or a brand new system folder or creating a brand new system BIOS folder. So we can access and transfer all the BIOS files we need for our emulators over here or for today's video, specifically the GBA emulator. What we need to do is right click here. We're going to be creating a new folder and I'm going to be naming it system. And this is going to be our new system or BIOS folder for RetroArch. After this, we're going to be heading over to RetroArch and we're going to be manually mapping this. So RetroArch knows to point here instead. While we're here, we can also add a couple of extra folders. We can add a saves folder. We can add a save state folder. We can add a config folder and we can even add a games folder. Here you can pick and choose all the different files that you will access regularly from RetroArch and we can remap them so RetroArch will look here instead of on the internal Xbox storage that we cannot actually access any other way. Doing this method, we will easily be able to access this. We can make backups, we can make copies. So this is definitely a method I'd recommend doing it. But for today's video, the only one that is necessary is creating a system folder. Although you can feel free to make any other folders here as well that you like, but it is totally optional. From this point, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be launching RetroArch from here and we're going to be brought up to our RetroArch UI. From here, we're going to be coming to the left. We're going to be coming to settings and now we're going to be scrolling down until we see directory. And here we can see the directory for all the different assets inside RetroArch. So the first thing we're going to be looking for is the BIOS and system file, as you can see right here. We're going to be clicking the A button to open this up. Once this opens up, we're going to be scrolling down until we see the S drive. We're going to be clicking the A button. We're going to be scrolling down to program files. We're going to be coming to Windows apps. And then we're going to be looking for our RetroArch folder, the same one that we've seen on our computer. So for me, it's Platinum Fox. I'm going to be looking for the second folder. And here I'm going to be looking for my system folder. I'm going to be clicking use this directory. And now what we've done is we have remapped this directory to our system folder on our mapped network drive. So RetroArch will now search there for our BIOS files instead of the default location. So from this point, you can feel free to update any of the other files you want. I'm going to be doing my config file, my save file, and a couple of the other ones. From this point, once you have everything mapped, we're simply going to be clicking the B button to come back out of here. We're then going to be coming to our main menu and we're going to be coming to our configuration file and we're going to be saving our current config just so all of these extra changes are in RetroArch. So this video is brought to you by me. Today I'm going to be sponsoring my own video at my new merch line. This is going to be the first t-shirt I'm going to be launching for the channel. It's a very nice quality print that you can get from Teespring. Everything is linked right below the video here and all videos on my channel. It comes in a number of different colors. You can get it in a hoodie, different women's style t-shirts, stickers. It'll definitely support the channel if you can check it out and I'd really appreciate it. Let's jump right into the video. From this point, we're going to be opening up our RetroArch folder. We're going to be coming to the system folder right here. And here's where we're going to be putting our Intellivision BIOS. So I'm going to be coming back over to my other folder right here. And here at the moment, I currently have the two files necessary for our Intellivision BIOS files. So here we have two different things. We have the exe.bin file and we have the grom.bin file. So these are the BIOS and system file along with the graphics files that we're going to be needing for our Intellivision. What we're going to be doing is dragging and dropping both of these files over to the internal system storage on our Xbox. Just like that, we're going to have our files here, and that's exactly where we're going to need to have them set up. I'll be leaving some more documentation linked in the description down below about our BIOS file and the actual system files that we're going to be using, just in case you want to read that. I will also mention I'm not going to be sharing any download links for this. If you want to go download them online, that's no problem, but I will not be sharing any links for this. Or you can feel free to create a dump or backup of your existing Intellivision to actually be able to do this as well. The next thing we're going to be talking about are games. And at the moment, I currently have my game here, Centipede, and I currently downloaded it as a .zip file. I will also be mentioning I'm not going to be sharing in today's video where to download Intellivision games. If you would like to download them, feel free to do that online. However, I will not be sharing any links for this. Otherwise, you can feel free to create dump or backups of your existing Intellivision games. So once you have your games downloaded, they will most likely come in a .zip file as these are very, very small. And loading .zip files in RetroArch will be no problem whatsoever. And I always like to extract my games. To extract a zip in Windows is super easy. We simply right click. We hover over extract all. And at the moment, I already have it extracted. And here you can see I have centipede in a .int format. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So here our games can be either in a .int or a .zip format. Either of these will work just fine in RetroArch. From this point, you can feel free to load your games over to an external drive if you would like. Otherwise, if you're like me, we're going to be putting them on the internal storage on the Xbox. Either of these methods will work just fine. I will be showing you later in today's video how to locate them on an external drive as well. We can put them wherever is easier for you. So I'm going to be coming back over to my internal storage on my Xbox. I'm going to be coming to my games folder. I'm going to be creating a new folder here named Intellivision. And what I'm going to be doing is dragging and dropping my full centipede folder in here just so I can set it up like that. Now you can feel free to do it in the internal storage as mentioned or bring them to the external storage, whichever you would prefer. 
From this point, we have our BIOS file and game set up over on our Xbox. We're gonna be heading over to our Xbox from this point, and we're gonna actually be loading and talking a little bit more in detail about actually setting up and playing games. So once you're over on your Xbox and you've plugged in your drive, if this is your first time plugging in your drive, you might get this pop-up asking if you'd like to use it for Xbox game storage or media storage. It's really important here that you select media storage so we can add whatever files we want on here. Otherwise, if you select game storage, it will fully wipe your drive and only allow you to install Xbox games on this. So it's important that you make sure this is entered correctly. So once you're over on your Xbox, what we're going to be doing is opening up a RetroArch right here. And once RetroArch is open, what we're going to be doing is coming to the load core option here at the very top. And then we're going to be looking for our Intellivision core. Once you're here, we're going to be scrolling down until we see Mattel. And here we're going to be looking for Mattel Intellivision or in brackets free in TV. I'm going to be clicking the A button to select this core. Now our core is selected. From this point, we're going to be clicking down one and we're going to be coming to load content. And here we're going to have to locate to where our games are. So if you're loading your games from an external drive, you can simply come to your E drive right here, and this is where your games will be. Otherwise, if you're loading them from the internal storage like me, we're going to be coming down to our S drive. We're going to be coming to Program Files, Windows Apps, inside our RetroArch folder, and here you can locate to wherever your games are. Now, depending on how your RetroArch is set up, you might actually have an issue where your games will load instead of your S drive inside your D drive, inside your development folder, inside your Windows Apps, inside your RetroArch folder, and you might be able to find everything here. Now, I would suggest avoid using this as much as possible. Adding or adjusting files inside your D drive can break your RetroArch and potentially your whole dev mode. So this is something to keep in mind. I would avoid using this and try to only use the S drive when and where possible. If you are having issues, I'd recommend just reinstalling dev mode on your Xbox and RetroArch to see if this helps and allows you to fully use the S drive instead of the D drive. But just something to keep in mind and be cautious about. I'm going to be coming back to the internal storage on our S drive, program files, Windows apps inside my games folder, inside my television folder. And here I'm gonna be loading up my centipede.int file, or as mentioned, you can also load this directly from a .zip file. I'm gonna be clicking the A button to open this up. And now we're gonna to have to wait a couple seconds. Our screen will go black. And just like that, our game will load up. So as you can see, my game is currently loaded. And just like that, it will load up and start to play. From this point, there's a couple things we can play around with first that I would recommend doing. What we're gonna be doing is pressing our menu combination to open up the on-screen menu. For me, it's down and select. And what we're gonna be doing is scrolling down here until we see controls. We're gonna be coming to port one controls. And what we're gonna be doing is remapping our port one to retropad with analog, just so we have that set up. I'm gonna click the B button to back out of here and then I'm gonna be going back into my game. Now, once your game is loaded up at the moment, I have it paused. What you can do is unpause. You can press L1 and use your D-pad and make sure that you have number one here selected. So you have port one selected and now your game should work correctly. Otherwise, if you're having any issues with controls, it might be because of that. And this is how I had the least amount of issues when trying to play in television games on my Xbox. From this point, there is no other options for this core. So you can't actually do anything else here with this. So it makes it a little bit easier to some of the other devices out there. But that's just something to keep in mind that you can feel free to come in here and adjust that. The last thing I'd recommend doing is creating a game playlist. It's basically going to concatenate all of your games from a specific console. It'll save you a little bit of time so you don't have to select cores anymore. And it'll make your overall RetroArch experience a lot better in my opinion, especially if you're using a lot of different consoles and devices. It's not something I'm going to be showing you how to set up in today's video, although I will be leaving a card on screen to my previous video where I show you step by step how to do that. It's definitely something I'd recommend doing and will help make your RetroArch experience a lot better. Anyway, guys, I want to take this moment to give a huge shout out to the channel members, Sean Daly and Joshua Davis. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to have your name shout out in future videos or some other perks, be sure to click the join button underneath any video on the channel. It would really help me out. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. If you want to support me, drop a super thanks in this video. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.